Hello my soccer universe, the international break is already behind us again and there have been quite some events. I said that the second set of fixtures maybe normally was not that great, however we saw quite a few upsets there and it's this tricky second game that caught a few. I mean chiefly among those is of, are of course Denmark and Spain who both ended up losing but also performances by France and, for instance, Austria, among others, were all not that great. However, there were also a few turnarounds, uh, like Italy came back to winning ways. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Against Malta, nothing else was expected. Yeah, there were a few upsets in there as well. Uh, another one that actually dropped are the Czechs, who had, after the great win over Poland, a slightly disappointing result as well. However... There are a few nations that kept the level. Um, England comes to mind and Portugal come to mind, who are just flying at this point in qualification. Uh, Switzerland also surprisingly very well in the whole thing. So yeah, I would say we look at a few marquee games and we start probably with the most stunning result. Kazakhstan against Denmark 3-2. Now. The result in itself is already stunning. However, the match film is even more so. Uh, this is a Kazakhs team that has almost exclusive player from the Kazakh league. So that is one thing. Yes, they have a huge time difference and the games are played, you know, on an afternoon rather than the evening. So, you know, travel and, and so on. They have a home field advantage. Let's put it with, with that when we have seen Kaz Kazakhstan putting in, in Astana usually quite some good performances, even uh, against a, a France team and so on. However, Denmark had that game under control. Hoyland scoring two more goals. This makes it five. He scored all Danish goals in qualifying. Uh, just at the half, it is 2-0 Denmark. Everything is cruising. However, this Kazakh team is not giving up. Now, it turned on a penalty call that was absolutely ridiculous. I don't want to take away from Kazakhstan, but if that penalty is not given, I think the game does not turn. That penalty call, Lars Wind gets the ball on his hand. It's not even clear whether he, he touches his hand. It's, it's more on the sleeve uh, than on the hand. And it's a penalty. It's a ridiculous penalty. And uh, Zainutdinov converts it in the 73rd. Still, you would think Denmark, a routine team, will see this home. And this is where you have to fault Denmark. Kazakhstan threw everything, plus the kitchen sink, at Denmark. They really, they were already before that pressuring. They continued that. And then Tagi Bergen, with a long range shot, one of the great goals in this international break, gets the equalizer in the 86th, and then Einbethoff heads it in in the 89th to turn the game on its head. To tell you how much I thought that Denmark has won that game, I actually watched the first half of that game. And then uh, I thought, yeah, this is done. I'm uh, going to uh, spend some time with my wife and the kids. And I come back just uh, during stoppage time, where then I'm bet off, uh, gets a uh, yellow, uh, second yellow, yellow card for time wasting. And I said, what? 3-2? How can that happen? And this was, yes, I saw that the, uh, the Kazakhstan were pressing, but I didn't think that Denmark is going to break. Denmark totally totally broke and had, had, had to rewatch the whole second half, at least in speed as well. So a uh, rather, rather remarkable result and a little bit of a dent for Denmark, who is still very much odds on to favor favorites to qualify. From that group, however, it makes it a little bit more exciting and maybe Kazakhstan could spring an upset. No upset for another former Soviet team, Ukraine, uh, against England. It was a very emotional game. Uh, first of Harry Kane uh, could walk on the field with his two daughters, which I saw them in the tunnel and I really, th I, I was wondering, why is this girl hugging Kane's hand so much? Yeah, of course, it's daddy and they, they say it on the back, daddy. Um, the Ukrainian players, of course, walking out with Ukrainian flags, many Ukrainian fans there. So it was really, really emotional because you could also see that uh, the English fans for once did not whistle the anthem, they actually showed support for Ukraine. And it's kind of this weird thing where, um, you know, you want to show, but you need to win. 
Inga did a professional job. Yes, Ukraine kept the game slow, but didn't create hardly any chances. And then Bukayo Saka makes a cross in and Harry Kane just taps it over the line. Again, Harry Kane, who has now extended his goal scoring streak for England. Uh, and then Bukayo Saka, just a few minutes later, a wonderful wide range shot. Is it as good as the Kazakh one? Maybe not, but it was a very well taken goal and the game is done and then England played home professionally. Ukraine honestly offensively were disappointing. I don't know whether they, they were spooked by the occasion, by Wembley or the English team was so good or they just um, then gave up themselves in a way. That is a little bit hard to tell for me. At the same time, a uh, major result, and I'm so sorry to see Liechtenstein actually fall so badly because this used to be a few year, years ago of the small front and one of the better ones, but Liechtenstein at the moment is horrific. Iceland going to Liechtenstein winning 7 0. That's a pretty big result. On the flip side, Slovenia only 2 0 against San Marino. Also, a little bit, bit, bit surprising. I thought when you uh, in my preview that I thought that Luxembourg could do something to Portugal. No. <laughs> <laughs> never, never. This Portugal team is really, really good. The only thing that I do not understand is, I mean, I somewhat understand, but why is Cristiano Ronaldo still there? I mean, he is just there to pad his stats without much contributing to the game and not helping Portugal move forward. Yes, I think he can be a um, person that can uh, you know a camp can be there for for a team to inspire the younger generation although this is not the role that I see Ronaldo in he cares about his records and we've seen at the World Cup that a Portugal team with Ronaldo is less than a Portugal team without Ronaldo so yeah um, whatever you want to say I actually think that Roberto Martinez probably said okay you want to have to be the most capped international uh, men's player. Okay, I give you the loss to Windows. I think now he got to drop him and really look, look forward. Be it as it may, he scored again two goals. He scored the opener. So for once, he is actually contributing the winning goal. If if you'd like, he scores the fourth goal. Assisted by, by Bruno Ferrancho, Felice and Bernardo Silva in between. I mean, that Portugal team just looks ridiculous. Rafael misses a penalty. Hmm. Although he assists Otavio uh, and then scores uh, uh, the, the last goal of the game. Uh, speaking of players from Italy, the Italian team, yeah, <laughs> easy players from Italy, the Italian team had their hands full a little bit with Malta. Malta had a glorious chance to take the lead. However, Sandro Tonali corner finds his way to Retei, and I think this is the way to pronounce it, Retegui or Retegui or whatever, it's Retei. Uh, I still say it's he's the goal guy, Rette Gui, Rette guy, Rette being the Italian word. In any case, second international for Italy, second goal, the breakthrough goal. Uh, Nyonto had to come off with, with, with an injury, but with that uh, lead, and Italy looked in control, and Tonale with another sort of assist to Pessina, although I think it may have been an own goal as well. Make it 2 0 for Italy, uh, who then had a rather good control, but then again seeded it a little bit Malta were coming and they probably should have uh, scored a goal that would have been a little bit more re representative of their performance in the end Italy see it out and have the are finally on the board after a fight back against England they get the points the important points against Malta a huge win for Finland in Northern Ireland which actually increases their chances of qualifying quite a bit you know they're in the Denmark group um, I would say this actually would put them in uh, the driver's seat for the second place although uh, don't discount Slovenia but it's between Slovenia and Finland there Kalman getting uh, that goal and then another pretty big win I said Portugal and uh, Bosnia will be qualifying from that and uh, Slovakia may have a have sometimes to say that I didn't rate Slovakia all that much I mean they were drawn out of the fifth pot FF after all of disastrous Nations League campaigns Mark and Haraslin getting the two goals in a 2-0 win over Bosnia putting Slovakia in a pretty good position for qualifying uh, that was the Sunday on Monday Austria played Estonia and after a really good performance against uh, Azerbaijan Everyone expected that against Estonia, they're gonna just roll over. And to be fair, it was there. 
if they convert their first few chances in the second minute, uh, Wimmer intercepts uh, 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 the goalkeeper far up, up up the field. He's just uh, dragged out and then cannot get the shot on goal. Then there was a nice uh, attacking move that Gregorich didn't get his hand, hand uh, um, his foot on. And then Gregorich misses a penalty by putting it on the bar. And you could see how this was kind of working in him. I mean, he worked his uh, behind off to make up for the, 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 the miss. And he's a really hardworking striker. But uh, he admitted as much after as I said, you know, I really have to apologize to my colleagues that I made it much harder because I really was imagining already the headlines and, 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 and so on. He really had to work hard for that goal. And as it is, Austria had that game in the bag. It seemed like it's only a matter of time until they will score. And then it's a free kick and two headers that were ridiculously uh, defended. And then striker Sapinen is far out on the right. Ball gets to him and it's 1-0 Estonia. Maybe against the run of play, but I gotta give it credit where credit is due. At that point then, uh, Estonia was defending really well and there was not much from Austria coming for the rest of the half in a way. Also, as has been, it was an injury ravaged Austria side. However, still a very good side. A side when I looked at, at, at the lineup, there were some talents in there uh, and there were many uh, decent Bundesliga Serie A players in there where you would say this is still a team that needs to beat as Estonia. Uh, Coach Rangnick reacted, brought on Alaba, brought on Ad Ad Adamo uh, from South Salzburg, even brought on Kainz, uh, you know, lifting the squad a little bit, you know, also also the leadership for Alaba, uh, def definitely, although he, this was his first game back from the injury that he suffered at Anfield. And Austria wasted a few more chances until finally Kind uh, on a rebound from a uh, Posh header scores the 1-1 one, one at a point where I thought they're not they're not gonna score. But I knew also that if they score, this is gonna go through. And then again, it was kind of desperation. Estonia defending valiantly, Austria having the the, the, the possession, and uh, in the end, it falls. Baumgartner plays it over to Gregorich, who takes a shot twice deflected in. He make up for his penalty miss, he gets the winner. It was hard fought, uh, it was maybe not what many expected. I have to say that Austria overall played much better than they ever did under Foda, but I know how the headlines would have been if this would have ended 1-1 one, one or 0-1. Oh, Everyone would have put everything in question because the uh, start with six points to start the quarter, the, the, the quarter for education did not happen. That they hung on. They got the win and maybe that boosts even morale for the second string squad if you would like. And Austria starts with six points out of the first two games. Yes, it was Azerbaijan. Yes, it was Estonia. Sweden and Belgium still to come. But you have those six points, which is quite something good to have for sure. Um, Sweden is on the bottom there, then beat Azerbaijan at home 5-0, a result that raised a few eyebrows uh, in Aust Austria because we beat only Azerbaijan 4-1, but performance-wise, people here feel rather confident that Austria will beat Sweden and that is probably all that is needed and you don't have to worry too much about the Belgium games where some people are hoping it might happen, but I have. Uh, we have been usually talking about friendly, but uh, Belgium went to Germany yesterday, beat them 3-2. Belgium looking actually revitalized under coach Tedesco. Uh, how long it will last, that will be interesting, but watch Belgium. I think they will have a pretty good qualifying campaign, and I think for Austria it's mostly for second place, and there the games against Sweden will be decisive. Uh, decisive result also for Hungary, 3-0 over Bulgaria. We have to talk Ireland against France, a game that first of all those Ireland shirts by Castori, probably the best Castori shirts that I've seen, they are gorgeous and the new crest, really really happy with that. Uh, France had good control of the game in the first half without being convincing, Ireland put everything in that fight, um, but you know it is really hard to contain this French team. And right after the half, Pavard with a long range shot under the crossbar in. And you think France is gonna see this out. Everything but. Ireland came and especially in the last 10, 15 minutes, 
they create the chances, put France very much on the back foot. And if it wasn't for Magic Mike Magnon, Ireland would have gotten something out of that one. They would have deserved an equalizer for sure. It was an absolutely... Uh, France were hanging on there. However, France get a second win in a row. It was not a great cricket performance. It was a spirit performance for Ireland, where you kind of feel you should have gotten something out of that one. You really think you should have gotten out of that one. It did not happen. A uh, little setback for the Czech Republic, only nil-nil at Moldova. Uh, I can totally imagine how that game went. When Vlahovic, two late goals in Montenegro, see Serbia also taking control of their group with a 2 0. The Dutch bounce back with only 3 0 against Gibraltar after the 4 0 loss to France. Uh, goals coming from uh, Memphis and Nathan Ake. However, while they dominate all the statistics, only a 3 0 scoreline uh, seems rather bad. And Ronald Kuma said this was one of the worst weeks that he had as a national team coach. And, you know, his former national team buddies, Ruth Hüllit and Marco von Basten, also kind of putting the heat on that squad. Poland bounced back with a, a credible 1-0 over Albania. And then yesterday, um, Georgia, I told you not to underestimate Georgia, get a draw against uh, Norway. The goal was not scored by Kvaratskhelia, but it was a nice uh, shot by Mikko Datze after Sirlot gave Norway the lead. However, in that group, it's all about uh, Scotland against Spain, where Scotland just put the muscle up and uh, hurried Spain a lot, um, physically pushed them around, and Spain didn't really know much to do. Uh, it also did, did help that both of their defenders on the right side, uh, Lou, Lou Law, lost the balls and within uh, seven minutes of each half, McTominay had scored a goal. The first one uh, assisted by Ro uh, Ro Robertson after Porro loses the ball. The second one in the 51st, again, after I think it was Carvajal who came on um, for Porro, loses the ball and the ball falls to McTom the McTominay who makes it 2-0 and it was a fully deserved win for Scotland. There's a reason why I'm wearing a Scottish jersey in this video. Uh, it was an overall really spirit performance for Scotland. There was just a short period in the first half where Spain came on knocking. They, they hit the cross but they created chances and Scotland were mostly in their own half. However, as soon as it was 2-0, there was nothing coming from Spain. Spain also changing the squad on eight positions. I don't know why. Uh, are you not taking Scotland serious? I think this just might have spurned on Scotland even more. And in the, in the end, as I said, I, it was a fully deserved lead and I, I never had, had the feeling. I mean, at 1-0, if Spain get the equalizer, maybe something's happening. However, at 2-0, there was nothing coming from Spain. And now, in this group, one would easily expect Spain to go through and prevail. However, that's a big marker down for Scotland. And my buddy Andy, who gave me this beautiful Scotland shirt now, and I'm very happy how this works out. Uh, it's just beautiful. Uh, he already announced that this might be a coming-of-age performance for Scotland. Yes, this was. This might have been the marker that, uh, while you have the playoff spot secured, this might be... The marker that you did put down and said, yeah, we're going to qualify directly here. And they might as well. Uh, we had also two big wins in Group I for Romania and especially Switzerland. Switzerland 3-0 over Israel. Switzerland are flying and will cruise through this group. I, I, I can only imagine that. And then another one, Croatia uh, winning 2-0 in Turkey thanks to two Kovacic goals. Uh, it was a rather routine performance um, in the sense that Turkey tried everything. They even scored an early goal that was not, not, not given for offside. Uh, and then just in that um, phase, Pajalic, it was a nice attacking move. Then uh, the ball, but uh, at, at the end it kind of falls to Kovacic in the 20th minute, maybe make mix, mix, mix 1 0. And then Croatia controlled the game, make it 2 0 again. Pajalic assisting Kovacic. And that was that. Turkey trying, trying really hard, creating chances. Croatia just seeing it out and getting a 2-0 win. And then in the same group, Wales winning also 1-0 at home to Latvia. And so, we can already see here the winners and losers. Scotland, of course, having a biggest win. So, uh, teams that 
have improved their chances. Uh, Poland are back, Romania, uh, Hungary, um, Slovakia, Finland and Croatia definitely have very much improved the chances of quad qualifying. Whereas it was a rough uh, match day for Montenegro, Turkey, Bosnia and of course Denmark as well. So those are winners and losers. Let's go through the through standings. Uh, Group A, Scotland is in the lead, have now a pretty good chance of quad qual qualifying, uh, almost 80%. Uh, with a third third percent chance of ending up in the playoffs they are now odds on in second place Norway with drop 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 20 points and losing already uh, have a huge hill to climb there group b france will see this through greece we gotta see they've only had one game uh which is a gibraltar win you would think that the netherlands uh will make that, that, that they want. but if ireland go there this could be a tough uh battle England also already more or less through like France. You would expect Italy, although uh, Ukraine, if they have fighting spirit, they can, I think they can hurt the Italians. I don't think North Macedonia seems to be at the moment a little bit on the downward slope. Group D, Croatia in control uh, despite dropping the points at home to Wales. Wales at the moment will hold on with Turkey, but let's see. How uh, this will develop, the Czechs and the Poles should go come out of Group E. The question is, is who will win first? I think all the other three are more or less out of it already. Uh, group F, Belgium, the big favorite. Uh, Aust it's between Austria and Sweden. Where I'm, I'm not uncomfortable saying that Austria are in a slightly better um, position. Also, Austria is uh, likely to get a, uh, a playoff spot where Sweden have only this chance, but even without that, um, Sweden slightly below Austria at the moment, but all to be decided, of course, in the head-to-head. -head. Serbia and Hungary are the two that will come out of Group G. Uh, group H now is a little bit interesting. Slovenia having six points. However, this is a, a, a group with six. Uh, I would say Denmark, uh, Finland, but you know, Slovenia can do something there as well. Group I, it will be Switzerland and Romania at the moment in the driver's seat. Israel having a horror, horror start again, and I don't think that Israel will bounce back. And then in Group J, we have Portugal, and then it's actually pretty tight between Slovakia, Iceland, and Bosnia. That's gonna be an interesting one. Uh, for sure, but poor Portugal should cruise through that uh, group. Bosnia, mm, yeah, Gal Gal uh, Already, again, I put the playoffs up up there. How it's currently, if the the current standings on the left were the final final standings, it's kind of a wild one with the Netherlands being in there. Uh, a little bit more re realistic is the one on the right, where it's based on the expectations. Uh, I still looking at the Greece Turkey matchup that would be something I gotta say. Um, then, upcoming games. This is now at the end of the season in the mid June, so a long time. This is also at the same time when the final four of the Nations League will be played. So we don't have there the Netherlands, we don't have Italy, we don't have Croatia, um, we don't have Spain playing qualifiers. So, uh, gonna be also interesting so uh we have it on two match days i think greece ireland will be a very interesting game uh, we have to also see if denmark can bounce back against northern ireland but you know you see already not the greatest but france against Gibraltar. if you want to see goals same thing for england at malta um we have then uh, i don't think that on the second page there are uh, that many well, north macedonia ukraine i also uh, have a little eye out but it's the last few sets where there are, I think, two really interesting ones with Belgium against Austria, uh, Norway against Scotland. Forgot about that. Nor Norway against Scotland is a must win for Norway. And if Scotland gets some, something out there, Scotland look really good. Uh, and then Portugal against Bosnia is also one. So, yeah, a little bit of a lengthy video, but international break does deserve it. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Please drop a line below what you thought about the games. And I will surely talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.